Um, of course, Black realized here that this that this knight is very badly placed. He he has to be transferred to defend dark squares on the king side, so he rushed back with knight to c6. White invaded, knight e7, rook e3, and this is I think the critical moment in the game, because um, Black went here knight to g8, the knights got traded off, and then White um, combined the rooks and the bishop and the queen to attack g6 and he broke through with the sacrifice but at this point um, at this point white has a threat of transferring the rook over here sorry well after rook e3 white threatened to transfer the rook over here and to checkmate the black queen um, and the question is can black ignore this threat and counter attack and here, I think Black had a brilliant defense. He could have taken on c3, and, and this is not just for the sake of grabbing a pawn. The very important issue here is whether the black pieces can be activated, because um, this white pawn center is really restraining both rooks. Um, and by taking on c3, Black is, is opening up the c file, so now there's a possibility of a check. Um, and also the d4 pawn is now hanging so there's a possibility of this rook entering into the game um, so at this stage um, taking on c3 was a very real possibility but it, of course it takes a bit of uh, analysis to figure out whether it can be done so white carries on with his plan rook to h3 the queen also covers up c1 and now another great idea the second pawn takes on um, the second rook takes a pawn. White carries on with his plan, and now comes the absolutely brilliant uh, counter attack. So white's pieces are kind of tied up here. They're they're all defending each other, and um, they're surrounding the black queen, but they themselves kind of lose, and. Black has a great way to exploit that. He can go rook to g4. That basically distracts the queen from defending the knight, which in its turn was defending the rook. So, of course, it's bad to, to capture it, because even though black is down the exchange, he got a couple of pawns, his pieces are very active. Black is fine here. Um, so, white should try to get the knight out of the attack. Oh yeah, and, and of course, it's also not very good to um, take here. Well then, because obviously this falls and this is still hanging, so so White has to counterattack with knight to d7, and this leads to uh, probably a drawn position by force, pretty much. So check has to move. Now White has to take because his rook is hanging and his queen is hanging, so he has to take. Now it's important that the rook has broken through. Um, so a check follows. Black could not take uh, the rook because of the fork. So you said rook to c1, check, only move bishop f1. Now if king to h2, um, then black takes with check, so that doesn't work. So it has to play bishop to f1, and now queen to a1. Finally the queen comes out um, from this um, entrapment that it was in on g7 and now um, black pieces have come through and they're attacking uh, f1 so it has to be defended and now black can go knight to d5 all of this is computer analysis but it's it's quite pretty in my opinion um, after knight d5 black is down a rook for only a couple of pawns but the threats he creates against the the white king because he's threatening like knight to f4, knight to c3, forking these guys. His pieces suddenly become very, very active, and white's pieces are quite disorganized. The knight is hanging, the rook is god knows where on h7, this rook is doing also god knows what on um, b5. So, so white has to himself uh, sacrifice things back just to escape from all this. Knight e5, knight c3, and now the only way is to escape with the draw because uh, 
there's no time to move the queen. So if white decides to, to move the queen away, well then uh, some bad stuff will happen. Check, check, and now knight to e2, winning the queen. So he has to do something else after knight to c3, so he has to give a check. And now a counter sacrifice saves the game for white. And now just the repetition is going to be forced and uh, it's going to be a draw. So uh, a very, a very interesting bunch of variations after um, if black had taken on c3. As it went in the game, um, instead of taking on c3, he kind of just tried to, to defend against the rook e3 to h3 to h7 idea in a passive way. He played knight to g8 and after white exchanged, uh, white uh, invaded with the queen and the purpose of that was to, to force the bishop to move to the c file and to block the attack on c3 and after uh, the bishop moved um, white moved the rook and then the queen came back but he won a little bit of time because black has to regroup again to attack c3 again um, and now white's regrouping to attack g6 uh, there's no defense at this point anymore. The second rook comes to the destination and now he takes on c3 but at this point it's already a little bit too late and the sacrifice just crashes through. There's no more check on c1 because it's all covered and um, if if he takes then obviously white just um, wins the queen because of the pin. Um, so he took on g3 and um, here White found the, the decisive blow. He played bishop to f7 with check. Um, and now it turns out that if the rook takes, then he takes here on g3 and he's winning the queen. And he's going to have a decisive um, advantage after winning the queen. So he tried to retreat. White uh, grabbed the queen. And then he just destroyed uh, the black position with bishop to e6. So a very um, sharp game, and and Botvinnik in his notes explain all the strategy behind his his moves and and, and his planning, but there was a lot more um, going on in terms of variations, and the game was um, uh, full of complications under the hood. Nonetheless, a great example of how to play nice, of how to play with the isolated pawn and how to put pressure on the dark squares uh, against the weakened position of the black king.